Hi everybody. Tuesday night, 6.30. Time for Ask Abby. Questions for the Queen of Construction. Remember, my advice is free, but my taste is very expensive. Um, and I'm gonna be talking about money a lot today because we're talking about maximizing your storage and storage space is expensive. I know this, I'm gonna start off with an anecdote about storage space. I've got a client who has a very nice, hello everyone, a very nice uh, property in Knightsbridge, opposite Harrods, don't you know? And they spent, I mean, I'm having to ballpark it because they actually told me how much the overall reverb was. I've tried to extract out how much the storage was, but they spent about £50,000 on installing storage into their home. And it is beautiful storage. I mean, let me tell you, the doors, oh my God, it's like something from a science fiction movie. They kind of come out and they slide along and they're effortless and the finish is pristine. And you would think as storage goes, if it was a show flat, you'd be like, oh, it's perfect. It's diabolical. They have no space for anything. Honestly, they've got a shelf between their hanging that's where everything is. There's no space for hanging because the stuff is piled up so high because no one actually considered what they needed to store. They just thought, oh, storage. Yeah, I'll buy some of that. And probably because of where the flat is and who they are, they went to a very nice place who sold them a very nice system and with a very nice bill. Thank you very much. I don't think I've ever spent that much on anything apart from I think my first flat was the same as that cost, actually. Yeah, I think they spent the same amount on their, on their storage as they did on my first flat. Um, and the point is, you, I'm going to say this over and over again through, through this evening when I'm talking about storage, when I'm talking about maximising your storage, and I'm talking about building in solutions. There are people out there who have very good intentions, but they're not professionals. And then there are people out there who are just salespeople. They don't care about how you live in your home. They don't care about what you're storing. They're just trying to flog, uh, flog their product. So what I'm doing is I'm hacking this for you. I'm showing you how you know what you need to store so we can design in the right storage for you. Right, so that's my anecdote. That's my lesson. Hello, everyone, giving some waving to people who are here. Thank you for joining me. Um, okay, I'm starting with the big lesson. Normally at this point, I get my pen out. My pens are in a pack, so give me a second. Because this is very effective. This is where I stand in people's home and I go like this. Pen, not a magic wand. Why can you not have everything in the world? Because where would you store it? There is a point that you have too much stuff in your home. That's the starting point of this. I am gonna come on to how to build solutions. I truly, truly am. But I really want to talk about having fewer things, having less stuff. I'm talking about the process of decluttering. Now, I don't care if you do that, you marry condo it, you watch YouTube videos, you do it with a mate. Before we build storage, I really, really, really want you to audit what you're storing because storage is expensive. It takes up square footage of real estate, which is expensive. So if you're building storage and you're taking up space for something that you're not using, give that money to me. I was going to say burn the money, don't burn the money. Like give the money to me because you really are just wasting cash. So advice number one, have less stuff, declutter. Advice number two, do it again. I'll tell you the reason why. The first time you try and declutter, it's almost impossible. It's like an emotional roller coaster. You find stuff that you've kept and you're, oh my God, do I want to have it? Let me tell you a story. You get rid of some stuff and it's quite efficient and quite good, but actually you've not been ruthless enough. So go back to it and do it again. The second time round, you'll find that there's stuff that you're hanging on to that you're like, well, it's sound. It's not that it's broken or that it doesn't bring you joy. Thanks, Marie Kondo. I, honestly, that phrase is really useful. Um, but there's something about it that it's like, uh, just not yet. The best example of this is uh, clothes that you're going to diet into. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's lovely, you love it. I mean, it doesn't fit you right now, 
but you know, in 10 kilos time when that's fallen off, it's going to fit you. So this is a time when I want you to start thinking really critically about the stuff that you're keeping hold of, but you're not using. And there's a little hack here. My advice is you put it aside. So vacuum pack it, put it in a box, put it in the long term storage section. We'll come on to how we store things based on different time scales and then put a little thing in your diary. So, for example, if you think that you are going to lose 10 kilos by Christmas and therefore you can wear all those party dresses that you've got, put it in a vacuum bag, put it in whatever it is, write the date on it, put it in your diary and do me a favour. If you look in the diary and it says, have I achieved that goal? Get the stuff out, get the stuff out and use it. And you know, if you haven't, give it away to charity put it on Vinted, put it on Gumtree, put it on eBay, because otherwise you're just in the cycle of storing stuff that you don't need, forever promising that you're going to have it. And I'm telling you, that doesn't bring you joy. That's just miserable. This is also true of tableware for when the Queen comes round. I know we can't use that phrase anymore, can we? So maybe, maybe it's time for that to move on and find a new life and for you to have that space back. Because remember, that space is money. Okay, so I've assumed, let's like, that was my naggy bit. I got my naggy bit out the way early. So we're gonna now be chatting all good practical solutions. I might nag a bit more, but I promise it won't be at you. It'll be at what other people say to you. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the process that we go through when we are designing and maximizing our storage. If you've listened to anything else that I've talked about when I'm talking about the, the construction process, I always talk about three stages. You design it, you buy it, you build it. The good news is 90% of what we're talking about is gonna be talking about the design it stage. This is stuff that you can do, even better, you could do it, for free. This is free. This is brilliant. I mean, unless you want me to come and help you, I will charge you to do that. But you could just watch this for free and do it yourself. Um, so we're going to be talking about that design at stage. Before you jump in, you run to Ikea, you run to your local carpentry, uh, you know, wardrobe designer and say, I need more storage. Take a step back. Take a step back. We need to see what we're going to store first because this is how you maximize storage. It's not that there's no such thing as generic storage. Storage has to be specific for the task. So remember, I am the queen of construction. I'm not an IKEA salesperson. So I am going to be talking about solutions that give you the most efficient storage that maximize your storage. So it's not a one stop solution. It's going to be unique to you. I said the naggy bit had started for you guys. I'm now going to kind of nag some people that sit in a realm over here somewhere that that like kind of, you know, that exist, but they're not physically here right now. Um, they're often people who have really, really good intentions. So it might feel a bit nasty what I'm about to say, but they're classed as salespeople and they're sometimes classed as your friends. And here's the tell. Here's a little thing that you can listen out for. If they start with, well, what I've done when they're talking about storage, you know, they're, they're telling you about how you should design your kitchen by saying, well, what I've done. Right. So the, the big thing is you're not them. You're not them. A professional won't tell you that unless it's really to amplify a point that they're making. A professional will listen to you, listen to what your needs are, listen to the quantity that you have, the frequency that you need to access the contents of the storage, any special requirements about it, and then will suggest a suitable solution for it. Someone who's not professional, who doesn't really know, who has may have life experience because they've managed it for themselves, they will only be able to talk about themselves. That's great. But your home is your home. What you store, how you store it, what you use, when you use it, that's unique to you. Just because your mate stores their spices in a spice rack that way doesn't mean to say that's going to work for you. Replace that spices with shoes or skis or paint or whatever the hell it is. That's going to be unique to them and it's going to be unique to you. OK, that's officially it. I'm out, I'm out of nagging now. I'm out of nagging. I just have to say it because I hear it a lot. I sit a lot at dinner parties and I hear people going like, oh, let me tell you how to do it. And it's like, wow, I didn't know you were a professional in that. And by the way, you're wrong. I wonder why I'm not invited to dinner parties anymore. Hmm. 
Maybe I know why now. Um, okay, so now we're going to do something. Guys, do not try this with everything in your house in one go. If you do, you're either going to lose your mind or get so bored that you just stop doing it. So I'm going to tell you the kind of process that you follow and then we're going to pick a space as an example. And I'm going to talk to you about how to do that because truly that's if you try and do everything in one go, even as a professional, if I try and sit and do this with a client in one go, it's pretty overwhelming. But we start off, we're, we're, by the way, we're halfway through the design process already because we've been thinking about what we're doing. So we start off with the what. What do we need to store? The quantity of it, remember, you've decluttered, so you should have an idea. So you could get to the point of, you, I know that I've got 50 pairs of shoes that are left. I know that I've got... 300 dresses. I know that I've got 17 tennis rackets. I don't know. Whatever it is after your decluttering that you've got down to. So you've got your quantity. Then there's the type of storage this thing needs. By the way, write these things down in a column. What you've got, the quantity you've got, type. So does it need a shelf? Does it need a drawer? Does it need to be hung? Does it need to be boxed? Does it need to be vacuum packed? Does it need to be, does it need power? Does it need to be chilled? Does it need, does it need, does it need? So kind of anything that's unique to that thing. And I know that there's certain options, but go with me, go with me what, with what you want, how you want to store it. So if you want to hang your clothes, start there. Then, and this is a really important one, look at the frequency that you need to access that thing. Because the one mistake lots of people make when they come to me and they talk about storage is that they want access to everything, every day as if it's all visible to them, like you're living in some kind of Costco and you can just walk around and see everything that you own. Um, that's fine. And, you, and we can build you storage that looks like that, but it will be like you're living in Costco, which no one wants to do that. No one wants to do that. It's like a funny bit in a movie or a comedy thing where they fall asleep in that. No one wants to do that. So be quite tough on yourself. Is this something that it's daily or weekly? If you're into the monthly or yearly access, that is things that we can start putting away. They can be put away higher up. They can be put away in garages, in sheds, in cellars. We can talk about the location slightly. So that frequency is really important and be honest with yourself about that frequency. Um, if anyone tries to tell me that they need to get their skis out every single day, then I will say, that's great. Uh, is your house in the Alps? Do you ski every day? It's on a glacier, because actually you can only ski six months. Someone's going to tell me that they have a house, they get their skis out every day. And I'd say, good on you. Well done for proving me wrong. Um, as I said, if you try and do this for every single thing in your house, you're going to get so, so overwhelmed. So please start by picking a type. And I'm going to use an example. So I thought about clothes and I thought that's actually really boring because when people talk about storage, that they kind of always talk about clothes. I feel like a bit like we're all overwhelmed with you know, kind of adverts from wardrobe companies showing you this kind of stuff. So in actual fact, I'm going to talk to you about an area that I love to design and build and people always neglect, which is your cleaning cupboard. I know, I know, my life is so wild. Don't be jealous of me. Um, and that's what I've picked out. I've looked at my cleaning cupboard. Now in my cleaning cupboard, this is what I would do. I'd go through my, my what, my quantity, the type of thing that I need and the frequency that I use it. Well, everything in my, in my uh, cleaning cupboard, I use, if not daily, weekly. So everything falls into the daily and weekly category. I've got nothing that I use um, monthly or, or annually. I've got in there a stand-up vacuum cleaner, Dyson stand-up vacuum cleaner that plugs in. I've got a handheld vacuum cleaner that needs to be charged. So I need a power point in there and that's wall mounted. Um, so this is the thing about not just the what, not just the quantity, but is there anything specific about it? These things are important. Um, I've got a dustpan and brush. I've got a floor brush, like a sweeping broom kind of brush. I've got a bucket with all the cleaning products in it. I've got an iron. I've got a massive sticky roller where if you have pets, let me tell you, amazing game changer get them from muji very good um i've got a feather duster and i also have my sewing kit in there so there we go that's that's all the stuff that i've got in my cleaning cupboard now i could look at my home and go okay well i probably need like a, a space under the stairs for that and that's where i'll put things 
This Insta Live is about maximizing your storage. This isn't play the game of match an item to some random space that you've got available. So in order to maximize my storage, in order to build solutions into my home, my home, which by the way, I moved from a four bedroom house into a two bedroom flat. So the reason I'm so fastidious about storage, not only do I do it professionally, but I've also had to do this for myself. So I've got my cleaning cupboard, I know everything that's in it. And what I then do is I look at the size of everything and I say, well, what is the minimum space that I can fit this stuff into? Using a combination of shelves, of wall mounting, of hooks and actual floor space. And the answer to that, so you know, is I need a cupboard that is 450 millimetres wide because that's wide enough for me to get a Dyson in with a bit of wiggle room, because I'm not that accurate at moving things in and out. It needs to be 600 deep, and it needs to be 1800 high with one shelf. There we go. That is the size that I need. That space is tiny, absolutely tiny. I've seen the same quantity of stuff that I've described in an 800 by 800 under the stairs kind of space that's a complete mess and someone's saying to me I haven't got enough room for everything because it's not being thought about because it's not being considered and that that is the key to maximizing your storage it is considering what you need grouping everything together considering what you need and fitting it in this example was super, super easy and didn't that sound wonderful and I only need it to be 450 mil wide, which is nothing and 600 deep, which is nothing. And of course I can fit this into my little house. But what happens if you measure your space and it doesn't fit? And this is the bigger stuff that we get to. I use an example of a cleaning cupboard because it, it was quite good to talk about different things that are in there. It makes you think about it. It makes you think about electric points and charging points. But what happens if the space doesn't fit? So here's what I do. I've got, I've got a little like kind of flow chart of you've got your type of products that you need to store, your type of household items that you need to store. You've calculated the size that you need and then you measure your space. So the first question is, does it fit? If, if the answer is yes, it does fit, amazing lucky you gold star you're a winner go and buy storage that is suited to the function so here i've said you can go you can get that from ikea and have it installed by yourself or someone from TaskRabbit can help you with that you can go to a local carpenter and i'll talk about some little ways of talking to them you can go super super high-end and bespoke you can go to small bones you can go to mark wilkinson um but the thing is, you'll be you're buying the right space. You're buying something that's suitable for the space. That's brilliant if it fits. But what happens if it doesn't fit? What happens if you've done a calculation and actually that space simply isn't there? Well, the first question is, can you reduce anything out of it? The very first thing we talked about in this Insta Live was declutter and then declutter again. Because the biggest problem that there is that we're trying to store too much in too small a space. So if you get to the position that you've you've measured it all up, you've said, this is exactly what I need. I've got my dimensions, my 450, my 600, my 1800 high. I can't fit it in. What can go? What can go that can make that smaller? Now, if the answer is, yes, there is something that can go, right, okay, so you can make it smaller and then you ask yourself the question, does it fit? Yes, it does, go and buy something. If you can't reduce anything from it and you're being really militant and you're being really honest with yourself, then you've got two options. You can choose a new location for that storage. Here it's quite useful if we do talk about clothes for a second because this is where wardrobe design is the biggest challenge. The first option is choose a new location. So for example, you might have a spare bedroom, you might have space in a corridor. There might be somewhere else that you can measure and go, okay, I know I need this much space you can't see where my arms are going i'm indicating a big size um it doesn't fit in my bedroom but okay it could fit in the corridor it could fit in the spare room okay so option number one same storage in another location that somewhat presupposes that you've got other space which most people don't and it also works the first time you're looking at something 
But when you do do this for everything in your home, very quickly you start using up every single nook and cranny that there is. So if you can't fit it into your chosen location, there's no alternate locations, then really you are looking at working with an architect or a designer to expand your home. That's the reality of what we're talking about. If you can't get rid of things, then there is no other space to put it in. The only option that you're left with is expanding your home. What's amazing about this conversation when I have it one-to-one -one with a client is when I talk to them about the expense and the time and the process and the mess and all of that of expanding their home just so they can fit their stuff in, they really take a step back and go, oh no, oh no, it's not worth that. Oh, oh, I definitely can find a way of reducing what I've got. So it's why it is quite good to get to that option and consider actually, do you need to have, um, do you need to have everything that you've got? I want to talk for a moment about the idea of expanding your home to fit things that you have. This is very important when the thing that we're talking about is a, is a car or um, something related to your hobby where you have to own the kit yourself perhaps because it's custom made for you perhaps because pff, I, I, you're sponsored and it's got the branding on it there's all kinds of reasons why we need things and there's all kinds of reasons why we do need to store it personally at our own home if you're getting into the position of having to have something custom made for you extended or built that process that you went through to calculate how much space you need, what it is, what kind of storage it is, remember that shelves, whether it's hanging, whether it needs power, all that kind of thing. That is the absolute foundation of the information that your architect, your builder, your designer will need in order to design you what that extension looks like. So this isn't a wasted process, even if the end result is ultimately you will need to expand or buy another property. Even if you're buying another property, guess what? You start the same process again. Um, so you've gone through this little, does it fit? Yes, it does. Or I found a way of making it work. What happens then? You've done the design it stage. The next stage is buy it. You go out and you buy your storage. I mentioned some places already. I'm just going to go over which there are. Right at one end, you've got um, probably Ikea is your best um, relatively good quality, as long as you don't try and move it once it's put up, um, systems, modular systems for storage. And what's good about modular is, you know how you, you've already determined you for your home, what works for you, if it's hanging, if it's shelving, if it's drawers. It, they're very good at putting components together. They have varying size units and carcasses. The depth of them has already been considered. So you know that if you've got hanging, it's all going to fit in. So you kind of got Ikea at one end and I would probably add in there things like Gumtree and eBay and um, charity shops that are selling kind of furniture that's that's used secondhand X display. You've got everything from that end and you can go all the way through up to your bespoke joinery contractors. There will be individual ones in every single town that you work in. Ask around for recommendations. Um, brilliant companies that I work with are um, Small Bones, who is a, an absolutely fantastic uh, company who do beautiful bespoke joinery. Um, and also Mark Wilkinson, if you're if you're thinking about kitchens, they're a, they're a really good joinery contractor. Um, the assembly of it, again, I've mentioned, if you're buying from the kind of uh, lower end, the Ikea or getting something from Gumtree, if it's a bit overwhelming for you to do it yourself, use TaskRabbit because they've got brilliant people who can come in and help you. If you're buying from the other end, it will be a full service where they will design it, they will help you, they will have the contractors come in, they will do it all for you. So it just depends where your price point is. Please, 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 please remember what I said right at the beginning and in the middle about salespeople. You go in and you present them with the, this is what I need to store. Please don't let them sway you to tell you that's not what you need to store or that you need to do it differently because you live in your house. They don't. They're after the sale. They're after the cash. That is all. There are some companies that are very good. Those ones at the top end, they care. If they've delivered something that's not right for you and you go back in a year's time and just go like, 
you know, my tableware doesn't fit in my kitchen and I needed all of this display cabinetry for my china and I haven't got it, it doesn't fit. They would, they would be mortified to know that what they designed was wrong, but they wouldn't be responsible for changing it because it's your house. At the other end, Ikea, well, that's up to you to choose that you've got the right thing. So it's really, really important that you govern your own design or work with a really good designer, a really good client advisor, a really good architect who will be the guardian of what you need. Um, then you go into the process of building it and you have it installed and you have it fitted. For what it's worth, yes, I'm the queen of construction. So it's not going to be surprising that I prefer for my joinery, that's pretty much anything that's storage that's made of timber or partitions with doors on it. I prefer that to be built in. I prefer that to freestanding. The reason being what I perceive people want is to have a space that they can personalise with their art, with their furniture, with, you know, their, their whatever it is, their kids activities and, you know, the TV and the throw and the cushions and, da, 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 and the chandelier and all that kind of jazz. And actually what they don't want is loads of big, big pieces of furniture that are really cluttering up the space. Um, in actual fact, most of the storage I now do is what you call completely discrete storage. So it's got jib doors. That means the door has literally no frame to it. It works on a pivot. So you can't even see that it's there. It just looks like part of the wall. You open it up and lo and behold, what have you got in there? All of your laundry. What have you got in there? All of your um, cleaning stuff. What have you got in there? You know, your entire walk-in wardrobe where everything's there. So my preference as a builder is to build in storage. Well, what a surprise. I know that that isn't available to everyone. Um, always, always before you build it, check that it fits, check that nothing has changed, that your brief of what you need to have, everything fits in. Um, and that is it. That is how you maximise your storage. Declutter, categorise what you've got, check the size that you need, then look at the space that's available. Um, and as I said, I see so many people who do it the other way around. They look at the space and then they just try and shove everything that they've got into that. Uh, it, it doesn't make you happy. And it doesn't matter how much you spend. You, you can be like my clients and have spent 50,000 pounds. It doesn't magically make stuff work. Pen, not a magic wand. Um, and I know that's quite tough, it's quite a tough thing to say because actually storage is one of the things that it gets people down. It really, really does. Um, if their home is cluttered, if they can't access things, it's really miserable. Um, but this is in your hands. And at any point, if you get overwhelmed, you want to know anything more about this process, you know what to do. You can DM me. You can look at other content that I put out there online. Um, you can look at YouTube where I've got my Queen of Construction channel. Like literally no one looks at that. So anyone is welcome to. Um, and if you want to know more about one aspect of this and say, Abby, I didn't understand that. Show me your cleaning cupboard. How, the, how did you get everything into that space? Let me know. I'll do it. This is the whole point of it being an, uh, an Insta Live, right? It's interactive. Um, so that is it. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, I trust now the nights are drawing in. You'll be sitting there doing an audit of all the stuff that you have in your house, one category at a time, um, and finding wonderful ways to maximise your storage and start the process of building your happy home. Um, and thank you so much. If anyone has any questions, you can feel free to put them on here or DM me and I will reply to you. Thanks everyone. Lovely to see you. Cheers. Bye.